Thank you, Mr. President. Um, well, we won't be uh, we won't be embracing any of you today. Um, we won't be shaking hands in the way that we typically would do on an orientation day like this, and we won't be, uh, notwithstanding the biblical encouragement, nobody's going to get greeted with a holy kiss today or, or probably for a while. But I'm going to greet you this way this year, and that you'll come to understand is uh, part of an, an effort that we're, we've got here to keep it 3D in this semester and this year, in the room and not on Zoom. Uh, and that really just comes down to just a handful of pretty simple things that could mitigate our risk of not being able to undertake education in serious joy in person this year. And that is just wear the mask, wash your hands, keep the distance, clean the room, and pray for a, a hedge of protection on us so that we can undertake the work that is before us. And if we do that, with God's help, uh, perhaps we'll be back in here at the end of the semester s celebrating the grace that he extended to us that permitted us to do that. I'll go off script for just a second, Mr. President, to say that I, I want to reflect on having watched the news the last 48 hours and the announcements that several large colleges and universities just in the last 48 hours had attempted to come back in and to do their work in person and had to wave the white flag and say, it's not going to work, we're going home. Now, what struck me about these, all of these reports of three different major institutions is the news report went something like this. Today, big university here announced that notwithstanding their efforts to meet in person, that they've declared that they're not going to be able to do so and they're going to go back online and they've sent the students home. Now, as the news reporter is talking through this, they're running B-roll film of some major party that took place over the weekend where college students are in close proximity, guzzling uh, beers um, and, and doing whatever else. And you can see, well, this is how this happened. And then the thing that was really tragic in my view was in all three news reports on three different networks with three different schools and three different parents, there would then appear a parent who, after the, after the rolling of this Saturnalia footage, the parent would observe, you know, I really grieve that my, my, my child, my son or my daughter is not going to be able to experience the college experience. And it strikes me, is that what it's come to? That, that the college experience is, well, for lack of a better word, I mean, this kind of wanton uh, libation and promiscuity, nobody, nobody lamented the lost educational opportunity. It was like, I lament that they lost this experience. And then what astounds me about that is that this student or this parent who placed whatever value they did on that experience is willing to go into tens of thousands of dollars of debt in order to have it. Well, we're not going to be about that, but I can tell you this, we've got an experience in store for you ahead here. It's an experience of just drinking in uh, all that it means, uh, all, all that the God-centeredness of God means and the joy-centeredness of humankind, of sharing and learning over these coming weeks and months and years of, of what it means that God is most glorified in us when we're most satisfied in Him and, 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 and that your college experience won't be this. It will be coming to understand how you will become eternally happy, eternally happy, and how you will be used by our great God to make other people eternally happy. That's, that's the college experience 
that we have in store for you. And if that weren't enough, by virtue of a community of largely just individual men and women, saints of the church who have made you a ministry, a work of their ministry for Jesus Christ, you can receive this education in serious joy and leave here in four years, Lord willing, uh, and launch immediately into life and ministry as an adult, ready to take on the responsibilities of adulthood without a backpack full of student loan debt. And it's my privilege really to be the principal advocate of the Serious Joy Scholarship that permits you to do that and the liaison with the several hundred people who are making gifts to that scholarship regularly, ranging from some men and women who have given millions of dollars in that direction to uh, a couple saints over here in the Augustana retirement community right across the street that give us five dollars a month faithfully month after month because they have made you a work of their ministry and so what I want to encourage all of you as you come into this experience is that whenever it comes time whether you're the one making the making the payment for your tuition or it's a parent every time that happens remember that someone else has already paid two-thirds of the bill. That whenever you get your bill, always remember that someone else has paid two-thirds of the bill. And I want to encourage in you a, an attitude of gratitude that will persist through not only your, the tenure of your time here as a student, but we pray in a lifetime as, a, as an alumni of this school. Um, you know, when I, when, I, when I first took this job, I didn't really know anything about fundraising. I visited with, with John Piper, who was away at the time down in Knoxville, and I asked him, you know, where do I start? He said, well, make, make 2, Corinthians 8, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 your manual and go over it and over it and over it again, and it'll show you new things all the time. And as I thought about coming here today, I was mindful of this passage where it actually begins. We want you to know, brothers, about the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia. For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means, of their own accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And I'm almost brought to tears today when I think about these people out there who love you and who themselves in this season are in a season of serious affliction, who are giving beyond their means in this season and begging us earnestly for the favor of launching you, of, 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 of really in, in the most sincere and devoted ways of, of handing off the faith once contended for by the saints. It's, it's a holy thing. And so don't ever lose track of it. There'll be times during your tenure here where we're going to ask you to write notes to them, to engage with them, to let them know it's an important part of how this is working. And we're so, we're so grateful, and we want you to be grateful. And to the parents and, and others who are in the room today, uh, we pray that you would pray over this part of our ministry, that uh, whether you might want to be more involved with us in the support of this scholarship program now or in the future, that you might point us to that handful of uh, a few individuals who are capable, who have an affinity 
for supporting us in, in big ways or perhaps sending us in the direction of those faithful people that are going to write small checks forever. Um, this is not a work that's being, we don't take any money from the government. We don't really receive any money from any foundations that aren't directly connected with some individual's passion for Jesus. Most of this is just the saints, individual men and women who have said that among the work that they're doing for the ministry of Jesus Christ, they've made the students of Bethlehem College and Seminary. So remember them every day uh, and welcome. Thank you.